Hey everybody. So it's actually chilly out. Can you believe that? And I don't mean chili beans. I mean it's chilly. It's it is the end of April. Literally the end of April. And let's see if this works better. Oh, oh. And we are in the feed room. Yes, it's late. But you know, that's my hours. I work late. I'm up late. So ah! I might as well do it now. Um, Thehorse.com, I get their, um, well, I get a lot of newsletters from, from different publications. And uh, thehorse.com, not horse.com, but thehorse.com is one of my very favorites. It's all about health, horse health. And they've got everything from podcasts to articles. They've got a blog. I mean, it just, they're awesome. Well, uh, I opened up their, their newsletter and I noticed that one of the articles, discussions, had to do with EPM. And I also know, I've got my other one down here tonight, my other, there we go. I also know that EPM can be, um, misread and, and thought of you know, it, a lot of people will think their horse has EPM, and they don't. They have wobblers, and vice versa. Um, so I wanted to go over, you know, our phoenix has wobblers. And you've probably heard me laughing about him, bless his heart, because I just love him to death. Wow, these glasses are kind of wide. Anyway, um, kind of giggling at him, because he's. we call him our drunken sailor. And I just love him to death. You know, when he came to us... And this, it, it still amazes me. But when he came to us, he, he, his legs were so swollen and atrophied. And he walked, his back end would do this. You know, he would just kind of move those legs like this. He couldn't bend his legs. And now, you would never know that that's how he walked. Because his legs, that atrophy has worked out. And his legs don't, they're not rock hard and huge anymore. They've gone way down to normal. And now he, he walks like this. Now he may drag his feet a little bit, but, and still on his right side. But he, both of his feet aren't flat in the front, like somebody sawed the front of the toe off anymore. And uh, that is what it was like when he came to us. I mean, it was, he'd never been taught how to move. Uh, for his situation. So, in the article that they've got on this, I'm going to show you this. Uh, I'm going to turn you around, show you this picture, give you an idea. Now, we've got video of when we took um, took him to the vet in uh, Vegas. And so, you can see the x-rays, but this gives you an idea. See, this is, it's in, no, that's it. Okay, it's in the cervical spine, which means in the neck, all right? And it, it tends to compress and pinch right here. It pinches that nerve, and it tends to either damage, pinch, or kill the nerves in there. And so it's just like having your leg cut off, and, um, and you, you end up, here, let me put that a little closer, you end up with a prosthesis, and you're trying to think, but you, you really don't, you can't feel anything. So you really don't know where it's going to land unless you pay close attention. And that's what's got to go on. Now, you, you see the big difference between here and here. It, it's just huge, very huge difference. So you've got, you've got contact going on here or darn near contact, which causes swelling. can be caused by arthritis um, in the neck. There's some different causes we'll go over. But, but right in here, you see how it's pinching? Well, it's pinching because of the malformation. And that is causing those nerves, which send signals to where we need them to go, to uh, cut, ever, cut off the communication. So that's what, that's what wobblers, uh, what causes the wobbling in there. Um, and you can check this out on there, but on, uh, on, blah, 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 blah on thehorse.com. Turn you back around here. You can watch my silly face or you can just listen. 
Um, oh, I don't know who is or was on, but hello, hello. Anyway, um, so wobblers, uh, also known as wobbles, is uh, it gets its name from its primary sign, which is the wobbling in the horse when it walks. So it's unstable, it's uncoordinated. And uh, in technical terms, they call, they say the horse has a, now here goes my, my tongue tied, a proprioceptiveness deficit. Proprioceptiveness. Yeah, okay. So basically, it can't figure out what the heck it's doing. And uh, it has a lack of physical awareness of its limbs and their placement. So when you watch the videos of Phoenix, and that's what he's got, and he they, they mark it between one and five. He's like a four. I mean, he's really high up there. Five is laying down, can't get up. So he goes between a four and a five. And uh, being on the steroids um, is one of the things that helps because it takes that swelling and it brings it back down again, which takes pressure off of the spine and the nerves and the spinal cord. And uh, he hasn't had to take any in a while. He's done really, really well. Um, this was a horse that was going to be killed within a 24-hour period if the if Hannah's didn't come and get him. The guy called and said, hey, you know, come and get him. Uh, if you don't, we're going to shoot him tonight. And they said, well, we can't have that. So they went and got him. And I couldn't be happier that they did. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you've been to our website at uh, um, caringheartsforhorses.org, but the front... My cats are freaking out. The front page has a picture. I think it has a picture of, I think it still has his picture on there, of a horse that is covered in mud and people are bathing it. That's Phoenix. He looks nothing like he did then. Most horses don't look the same when they're healthy in comparison to they did, you know, what they did when they looked like crap. And uh, he looked like crap. He, it took him two hours to bathe him. It was a mess. Duh. I'm trying to fix this so it doesn't fall over. Equally. Yeah, that's a little better. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, it likes to mimic. A lot of the signs like to mimic uh, EPM. And, you know, the uh, um, Rudin Riddle Equine Hospital in Lexington, Lexington Kentucky, uh, make a statement that there are probably more horses out there with wobbler than EPM and it's kind of funny because you hear about you hear statements about EPM quite often and I know there's a few of you probably going would you please tell me what EPM is <laughs> well I'm gonna have to wait till I get there to try and pronounce it again because it's a long explanation but um Let's see here. The easiest way. Let's find the easiest way to say it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, we got the mixed signals. We already talked about that. And the fact that they score. And it's the scoring is done for neurological. Okay. EPM causes neurological issues. So that's, I mean, what is EPM? It's, it's an ailment that causes um, neurological issues. And it says that usually there's a degree of asymmetry although EPM can be symmetrical sometimes. In addition, EPM-afflicted horses might exhibit muscle wasting or atrophy and cranial nerve signs such as facial nerve paralysis. So if your horse has got paralysis going on in their face, chances are it's EPM, it's not wobblers. Um, there's a big difference there. Wobblers, remember, just remember that wobblers attacks the neck, okay, or your cervical spine, same thing, but it attacks the spinal area. Um, the biggest, leave that alone, I hear you playing with that gate. Hang on, I might have a speakies in a second. Hold on. What are you doing, Phoenix? What are you doing? Speaking of Phoenix, <laughs> he must hear us talking about it or me talking about it because that's exactly who that is, is Phoenix at the gate. <laughs> He's like, what you doing? Um, so we've talked about why. Uh, it also, another uh, it says a number of factors uh, can cause compression. Um, some of those things, and I didn't write down notes for you to act all smart and stuff. Sometimes it's easier just to read it. I mean, that's how we learn. You know, anybody that works in the health field of any kind, we read. And that's how we learn. 
but we read from, <coughs> excuse me, those things that we, these, these books and articles and journals that we learn from are journals from people that know what the heck they're talking about. They're not just people talking on the internet, uh, on a blog or, you know, etc. So everywhere I get my information, and, and I want you to know that, everywhere I get my information, I do my studying and my educating of myself is, it's through um, incredibly uh, educated channels. I mean, they know, they're doctors and vets and, well, doctors, that same thing, uh, but they're surgeons and scientists that have gone through and, and checked these things out. Um, so let's see here. Uh, some of the different things they've got listed that can cause, if you're wondering what can cause it, um, and the, the stenosis, it's called the narrowing of the vertebrae, which is also called stenosis. I don't use, a, you'll find I don't use a lot of uh, medical terms because I, I want you guys to know what I'm talking about in comparison to just sounding smart. I really don't care about sounding smart. I care about you you understanding in, in layman's terms, being able to understand what I'm talking about and what they're talking about so that you know what to look for in your horse. Because um, most of the horses that come up with wobblers are between two and five years old. However, there's a lot more cases now in the older horses. And they're finding that it can also, which if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. The arthritis or the buildup of calcium around the vertebrae, um, that's gonna that can also cause that to fill in and press against the spinal cord and the nerves. So that can have a lot to do with it as well, which of course has to do with age too. Um, it can also have to do with um, the bone growing incorrectly. Um, the, what they've got down here, as far as horses at risk, <clears throat> they say that there are uh, notable, notable differences in um, the male horses compared to the females. Uh, males are more apt to get it. Thoroughbreds, warm bloods, where to go? Thoroughbreds, warm bloods, and quarter horses. Go figure. And, you know, quarter horses around here are just huge. So uh, anywhere you've got rodeo and barrel racing and all that, quarter horses are going to be big. Um, it says they, uh, they're typically, notably, uh, affected more often. And you can read all of this on thehorse.com also. If you just go under wobblers or wobbles, uh, it's the same thing. It, they have two different nicknames, and you can read all through it. Matter of fact, they have talked with three different vets about all of it. So, but the big thing I want to share with you is um, one of the ways that you can identify it. Because if your horse comes up with wobblers and you just, you know, something just isn't right. You're, you're watching them and you're wondering, and it just you know, something just isn't right. So the very first thing you're going to do is get your butt on the phone and you're going to call your doctor because that vet is going to need to come out and do a neurological test on your horse. Okay. Um, what do they do? They put them through a series of um, physical movements and they watch how they deal with them. Like, you know, putting the neck up, for instance, when you put the head up, it compresses okay so you've got your head down you're stretched your vertebrae is stretched out and then you put that head up and it compresses that spine so that can cause it um, seeing how they walk straight seeing how they turn seeing how they do different things backing up etc uh, so call your vet immediately don't mess around with it please um, they also say that what else uh, of course, the next step, and that's, this is what we had done, is getting radiographs done, or x-rays, but radiographs. Uh, once you get the radiographs done, the next thing that you can do, and it's risky, and it's very expensive to have done, and we chose not to have it done at that time without trying uh, the, the um, corticosteroids because they worked out really, really well for him, and I'm so glad they did, and he hasn't had to take them for a while. 
Um, but he had a bout of colic and he exasperated them terribly and the swelling was bad. And I don't know if you remember it or not, but I thought I was going to lose him. And uh, thanks to many of you, we were able to find a way up to Vegas because my truck had broken. So, or it was during that time. So David Bernal was nice enough to offer to take us up there. And uh, I'm trying to remember whose trailer we took up. I can't remember whose trailer we took. Oh, I can't remember. Either way, um, took a trailer up, took him up, and uh, they took a look at him. The next procedure after that is um, something that they, it's called a, uh, a myelogram. And the myelogram, what happens is they, they put dye into that the spine and seeing the spinal cord and seeing where it goes and where it cuts off and um there's there's some risk involved uh so we decided not to do it and it's very very expensive um if we would have had to do it you know just to verify that's what it was we knew we knew we you know we knew <laughs> um the other thing is uh, the dimensions here as far as non-surgical treatments and uh, it, it wants to it, they make a point of letting you know that uh, neurological is not an, a euphemism for necrop necropsy <laughs> um, which is postpartum uh, wow I'm telling you postmortem exam okay necropsy is after the horse has died after whatever has died um, and it says that there's a, you know, there's a lot of things. That, now they say there's a lot of things that you can do to treat the horse and allow him to have a long, successful life. Well, I'm not sure what they're calling successful now for, for Phoenix. Um, you know, just being out here and getting the running that he gets is amazing for him. That's huge. Now he's going to start getting some structured, uh, therapy so that, He's paying closer attention to how he's moving his feet, when he's moving his feet, not just taking off like a bat out of hell. He's been doing much, much better with slowing down. Uh, once he's running, he's doing better with slowing down and not having those legs get underneath him. Because as you're running, you're, you know, their legs are going forward and kicking, propelling them backwards. And that's where all that, uh, that strength comes from. And that's where your motor is at, basically. So... Um, he's getting better at slowing down, but it's still rough on him. I mean, he bounces pretty good. Hello, I don't know who you are, but welcome to the Wobbler discussion. <laughs> um, so anyway, one of the things that they mention, and I had almost forgotten about this, and that's uh, vitamin E. Vitamin E is amazing i it doesn't i don't think it says uh it's amazing in that it helps equine degenerative myelopathy and equine motor neuron disease so anything concerning neurological okay anything concerning the brain and the the brain stem and the firing of the neurons um telling the rest of the body what to do i know don't tell people i actually know what i'm talking about because it'll really freak everybody out <laughs> Just don't do it. <laughs> um, but they don't say how much. And that's something I'm going to get hold of Cave Creek and talk to... I, can't, I think his name is Dr. Frank. I can't remember his name. And I'm going to ask him about that. Because I'm huge... Now, those of you that have been following... <coughs> excuse me. The healing that we've been doing on a Starbucks leg for his degloving, I use a lot of vitamin E on him and it helps the skin and w especially when you add the keratin to it. But the vitamin E is such an amazing, amazing oil uh, for wrinkles and scars and it's just amazing. That's my favorite word for it. Amazing. I love it and I use it a lot. Um, so, uh, let's see here. It says about 
reading on a study and some colleagues performed only 10% of horses with wobbler syndrome became normal given nothing but time and rest. On the other hand, when surgery was performed, about 70% of the patients improved. I got to tell you, I'm really tempted to find out because he's only five years old. Phoenix is only five. And oh my God, you watch him prance. I mean, when he takes it, he just prances. He's just beautiful. And if I thought that, I mean... I don't know what surgery would run. I mean, hell, we're looking at $2,500 just for Jax's MRI um, for his front legs. Because, you know, nowadays, navicular syndrome doesn't mean strictly the navicular bone. It can have to do with the coffin bone. It can have to do with the pastern. It's <laughs> It covers that whole area now. It's not just the hoof. It's not just the heel. It's also the pastern and the um, the uh, fetlock area, it, you don't know. You just don't know. But I don't want to talk about navicular right now because we're talking about wobblers. So let's see here. Laminectomy. Uh, the cord remains pinched no matter what position the neck is in. That's pretty much where he's at. Uh, a dorsal laminectomy. It involves actually removing portions of bone from the spine. Yeah, and you know that makes sense. Because if you get if you scrape that bone or chip it or do whatever it is that they do, file it, and you take that the bone that's causing that pressure against the spinal cord, excuse me, against the spinal cord, so that unless of course the nerves have been killed, if the nerves are dead, there's nothing they're gonna be able to do. I don't think you can regenerate a nerve. I don't know if stem cells can do that or not. I'm really not sure. But if I thought that there was a way we could do that without, you know, ah, spending you know, $150,000, I would do that. In the meantime, if we can get him to a point that he can pony and carry, you know, like 50 pounds or less kind of thing, because it's not about... For him, it's not a, It's not that, ooh, weight hurts. It's not that so much. I mean, up to a certain amount, I would think, yes, it probably would. I mean, we're talking about the neck and the pressure back behind the shoulders. and So, yeah. But when you're talking like, you know, carrying lunch and waters and, and a pack, not a 100-pound pack. <laughs> Let's be realistic here. Not a 100-pound pack. And we teach him to pony so that, and and get him to a point that he has control. He's learned how to use his his limbs in a way that he's not just going to fall over and bounce into the horse next to him. I'm not now. I'm, I'm not talking about taking him on a damn goat trail, you know. I mean, but getting him to that point. That's what, that is my hope for him. He has a purpose. And, and now he has a purpose now with the kids, uh, with the at-risk youth program that we have. So he's doing very well there. Um, they are saying, though, uh, it says, Dr. Reed says that after performing about 160 cervical stabilization surgeries, about 75% of patients showed significant improvement. We may even get near 80%, uh, Reed says, and 62% are becoming athletic, whereas it used to only be 50%. I tell you, um, we're going we're gonna to look into it. It doesn't mean, you know, hey, you guys have a problem feeding your horses and you're, now you're talking about surgery. You know what? If we can do that two, three years from now after funding, we've gotten funding and we've got things rolling, why should we not think about it? Why should we not line it up now? So, um, holy mackerel, they've got tons and tons. Um, okay, so the good news is that you do have some control over the operation success in your horse's recovery. <clears throat> okay, that's not what I was looking for. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Yeah. In the end though, 
And it mentions riding them as well. It says if you do opt to ride, use common sense. Evaluate the horse's abilities before you get on. If he seems only mildly affected, you might consider riding him at a walk on solid level ground. Um, yeah, I'm not putting anybody on his back. It's just not gonna happen. If he goes now, when he goes down, I don't know if you've seen the videos of him running and he goes down. He's like a freaking weeble. He comes right back up again. <laughs> it's for, bless his heart. I mean, he <laughs> he goes down and goes. Whoop, and he's back up and he shakes his head like, what the hell just happened there? <laughs> Off he goes again. You know, that's, I'm sorry, but he's just got too much will to live. I'm not killing that boy. I'm not going to do it. Uh, let's see here. It's mentioning Seattle Slough. Mm -hmm. la, 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 la. Fusing vertebrae and human patients. Uh, it says the very first, the, the first procedure was performed on a horse in 1977 and developed the Bagby basket for fusing equine vertebrae in the early 80s. Although Grant has done this procedure on hundreds of horses over the years, his most famous patient received an implant in April of 2000. Thoroughbred champion Seattle Slough had begun having problems covering mares in the breeding shed that spring because of hind limb incoordination. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, watching Phoenix try to buck. <laughs> he bless his heart. He jumps and he's like, I can do this. <laughs> and he throws himself up. <laughs> I just love him so much. <laughs> he's such a character. And he tries to rear. I mean, he <laughs> he's bound to determine it's not going to keep him down. So anyway, um, Remember that if you've got a horse that, you know, is showing some imbalance, um, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and call your vet and ha tell them you'd like them to do, you want to schedule a neurological test. And when they say why, you just tell them they're out balance. So I'd like, you to, I'd like you to go ahead and test them for me. And, and then go from there. Don't consider it a death sentence just because you can't ride your horse. You took responsibility for that horse. Um, they're not just a money-making uh, venture, I hope. Um, they're a living, breathing, and have been proven, which is one of the reasons we're using them for the Equine Assisted Learning and Mentoring Program, is that it's been proven that they are so sensitive. They are so emotionally sensitive. And we pass them around more than you would think then you could even conceive of doing with a dog, which is to me very, very sad that we've allowed ourselves to think of, of horses that way. Um, they're such incredible sports uh, figures. And they really are. I mean, Seattle Slough is a good example. They're great. They're great at sports, but you know, that's not what they were born to do. Um, it just, it, here we're, you know, you're good at it, so we're going to make you do it. And then, you know, all these things, just like regular athletes for us. I mean, they're incredible athletes, so, you know. But like us, like humans, that all that athleticism, especially if it's continuous for a long period of time, it wears on your body. And my biggest issue is that... Um, you know, a lot of competitors of di in all different sports, once the horse stops making money and they can't do that sport anymore, we're selling the horse. And, and a lot of times you hear the excuse, well, there's a great kid. You know, he's going to be a good kid's horse and he's going to be this and she's going to be that. And I, I don't understand how, I, I, because I'm not that way, I have a hard time understanding that. To me, um, even if I can was competitive with my animal, whether it's a dog or a horse, they're part of my family. And maybe that's because of the way I was raised. So if your horse gets wobblers or you know somebody that has a horse with wobblers, it's not an automatic death sentence. Okay. Get a hold of me uh, once you find out that's what it is. And 
you're not sure how to deal with the therapy and how to help them learn how to move and different ways that they can do things, um, get hold of us here at Caring Hearts for Horses and we will do our best to help you out. And hopefully you can still have a long and very, um, what's the word I want to use? Fulfilling life and relationship with that horse. So, you guys have a great one. Thanks for hanging on and listening to such technicalities. I usually bounce all over the place. And uh, this time I did not do that. I do have great news about Facebook I want to share you, share it with you. Uh, cross your fingers over the next week to two weeks. We should be seeing a check from them. It looks like we finally got hold of the, we're able to get hold of the right division to get this handled concerning the fundraisers, uh, the three fundraisers that, totaled almost $300 between the three of them. And uh, they're finally getting things straightened out. So at least somebody came back to me with something besides thank you for your patience because they don't know me. My patience is gone. <laughs> and I'd love to use Facebook fundraising again, but they're going to have to prove to me that they can send us cash before that's going to happen. I'm not going to let them hold on to your money like that. So anyway, all right. From the feed room, uh, if you'd ever like to uh, bring out a comment, send us questions. Send us your email uh, address if you'd like to be on our uh, news. If you'd like to be on our newsletter updates, which aren't going out right now because we <laughs> have to get it together first. Um, and if you have any any suggestions for topics that you would like to hear. Any questions about anything, I'm more than happy to research it and go over it on one of our shows. I'm trying to make this a show for you. Uh, so I look forward to that. And the email is M-I-C-K-E-Y, just like the mouse at Disney, M-I-C-K-E-Y, at Caring Hearts for Horses, spell it all out, dot org. That's Mickey at Caring Hearts for Horses dot org. And you can also donate it at Caring Hearts for Horses dot org donation. And uh, we will talk to you. I will talk to you again later. I hope you have a great day. Ciao for now. If I can get it turned off. <laughs>